And joining us now live, Abby's OBGYN, Dr. Courtney Martin of Loma Linda University Medical Center is joining us. Uh, Dr. Martin, obviously a very powerful story on so many levels, but could you talk to us a moment about the tumor Abby had on her ovary? I, I have to imagine with her being pregnant, I, how were you able to find it? Yeah, that's, it's really important that, to know that when we do pregnancy ultrasound, we also take a look at the nexa and the rest of the pelvis. These kind of tumors are called teratomas, and they typically have a very characteristic uh, look with calcifications and differences in the tissue. And so that's easy to diagnose on ultrasound, but the rare piece is, of course, that it was one of these teratomas that has a, what we call a perineoplastic effect and triggered this, anti, this NMDA receptor encephalitis. Um, it's very rare, and it's extraordinarily rare in pregnancy. Oh, it's so scary to see a story like this. And I understand her pregnancy also turned out to be a contributing factor to her encephalitis, the pregnancy itself, and in turn her psychosis, right? Break that down for us and how, how common it is uh, for pregnancy to trigger mental health concerns. Yeah, well, in her case specifically, it's very rare. There's only about 12 cases reported in the medical literature about having pregnancy-related encephalitis with the NMDA receptor that was initially contributed from a ovarian tumor. And so this is extraordinarily rare. But the bigger question you ask that's so important is about the mental health components of pregnancy. We see that as a leading cause, suicide and mental health concerns as a leading cause of morbidity and pregnancy-related mortality in the state of California, which has one of the most robust mortality review committees in the United States. So it is a big deal. It is a huge problem, perhaps more of a problem than things like maternal hemorrhage, hypertension, and other common medical reasons that we talk about with the rising rates of maternal mortality across the United States. So we are working so hard in the obstetric community to make sure we're paying extra close attention to mental health and provide support for patients. And I think reducing that stigma, making sure pregnant women know that you need to be treated with medication, therapy, just because you're pregnant doesn't mean we don't give you treatment. Well, that's, you know, I, I think this just brings up such a larger issue. Of course, this is, is a very rare condition, as you've been talking about, the mental health aspect of it. But the, the maternal mortality rate, as you're talking about, I mean, we read stories all the time about how that's increasing, and we're one of the most developed nations in the world. Um, and I, I just... I fear as we continue to talk about women's health and, and you have lawmakers in other uh, areas of this country who don't necessarily understand everything that women go through right. just to have a baby um, and, and women who want children um, and some of the impacts that this can have, have physically, emotionally um, impact so much of their life. Um, you know, from your perspective, what really needs to be done in healthcare in terms of messaging um, to people because I don't think people really get it unless they've had someone in their life go through um, one of these situations. This one's rare, but you know, I, I've had other women in my life who have had postpartum depression. It's, we're still really bad at talking about that. Um, you know, maternal mortality, it, it, people aren't, we, we're not rallying together to figure out what to do about this. So for, for you, for, and you see this every single day, what, what can we be doing better? Yeah, it's a, such an important question. The reality is it's a multifactorial um, effort that needs to happen across the country. And I think California is a remarkable example of how we can reduce maternal morbidity and mortality through the California Maternity Quality Care Collaborative and the California Department of Public Health. There's been such incredible effort. And we see in California, the maternal mortality rates are the lowest across the country and have been on decline. And what matters about that is that in California, we have universal prenatal care. We have resources and support. We're looking at every death. We have a data center that all, just about every hospital in the state participates in that provides transparent um, re results from the care that's provided. So these are the ways that we impact it. But on the other side, we have to educate our non-obstetric physicians and hospital systems to have a bias against um, pregnant women in a positive way, right? So instead of having a wellness bias, we need to have an are they sick bias. And we also need to not be afraid to take care of the woman or the patient who's pregnant and only be focusing on the fetus. We see this a lot where we primarily focus on, well, could this hurt the fetus? 
is this bad for the baby? But we have a woman and you need to treat the mother, you need to treat the patient and then that will save the baby. And often we focus the other way. So we even saw with the COVID-19 pandemic, um, some of the most extraordinary rate, high rates of death in maternity patients. And a lot of what we see is discrimination, unintentionally implicit biases against women because they're pregnant, not mm -hmm. giving them the standard of care treatments because they're worried about how it might affect the fetus. So yeah. we really need to be changing that perspective in hospitals. And really, if there's some sort of higher acuity situation, transferring patients more pro progressively and proactively to tertiary care centers like Loma Linda um, or other academic medical centers that have a level four maternity center and a level four NICU, high level NICU and all the other resources like you saw in this case where we have a multidisciplinary neurology team, we yeah. have psychiatry, we have maternal fetal medicine, a it high all level NICU. We need all that together. Yep. Yeah. yeah, really important story. We really appreciate you joining us and highlighting this. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you.